This is Allrest, a world covered in a sea of clouds. Many giant life forms called Titans live in this cloud sea, and the people have built their countries and lives on top of these creatures. In the middle of this world stands the World Tree, and it's said that at the top of it lies Elysium, an idyllic land of plenty. Many great powers rule over regions of Ulres. The Kingdom of Uriah is one of them, its territory contained within their Titan. The Orions deeply respect nature, boasting advanced biotechnology. For now, we should keep our troops mobilized while we monitor the situation. Their rival, the militaristic empire of Morardain, is another. Controlling Titans through mechanical means, they bring heavy armaments to bear as they annex other lands in a bid to save their own from ruin and depletion. I doubt he would have been stopped, even by an army 5,000 strong. The imperial province of Gormak, a plentiful land now fallen under Ardanian control. And the Indoline Praetorium, whose people revere and worship the Titans. Indol controls the supply of core crystals, which blades are born of. And so despite being a theocracy, they hold much influence over the world's military affairs. Next, the Argentum Trade Guild. A shrewd consortium of traders, they do well for themselves by deftly navigating the strained relations between other nations and exploiting wartime demand. And last but not least, Torna, carrying out secret operations under the Cloud Sea to achieve their mysterious goals. Before long, this world will fall into turmoil over efforts to find the legendary blade the Aegis. That is precisely the kind of scenario that I mean to prevent. Hand her over to a groaner. The Aegis must be destroyed. Ah! Then I shall Aegis too and make mountains of cash. I'm guessing your goal is Elysium. That is our dream. Who will find the Aegis? Who will make it to Elysium? Only time will tell. Welcome to Allrest, the world of Xenoblade Chronicles 2. My name is Azota. Oh yes, that's me, right there. I may be relatively small, but I am also a titan. And this little troublemaker is the protagonist of our story, Rex, who lives on my back. I suppose you could say I'm his landlord. And his guardian, too. He refers to me as Gramps. You may call me the same. Rex used to work as a salvager, scavenging useful resources from beneath the Cloud Sea. Until one day he met a girl named Pyra, and the two set off on a quest to deliver her safely to Elysium. Can you believe he accepted such a lofty job just to impress a girl? <laughs> oh yes, and this is also me. Utterly adorable, if I do say so myself. In Xenoblade Chronicles 2, you too will embark on a journey across the Titan's backs. Each Titan fosters a unique scenery, very different from its neighbors. Some have big open fields, while others boast huge caverns set deep within the Titan's own body. Remember, we Titans are living beings, each with our own quirks, which you must learn to navigate. Of course, you'll also cross paths with many a dangerous creature on these Titans. It's their home too, but it's sadly inevitable that we butt heads from time to time. Those who fight together with synthetic life forms called blades, like Rex does, are known as drivers. When drivers do battle, their weapons and powers are granted to them by blades, such as Pyra, for example. Up to three drivers and three blades can work together at any one time. As you continue attacking with your normal weapons, you constantly work toward charging up your driver arts. 
These special abilities run the gamut, with some allowing you to inflict extra damage depending on your position, while other, more arcane arts can cause HP potions to appear. Just use them wisely and watch closely the tide of battle to know when best to deploy them. Blades also support their trusted drivers by using blade arts to increase the power of their attacks, their accuracy and the like. That way, the drivers can focus on playing a more active role in the battlefield. Just wait till you encounter some tougher opposition. Things won't always go your way, so it's important to learn the benefits of switching blades. By using items called core crystals, drivers can awaken new blades. This is known as resonance. You aren't limited to just one. A single driver can bond with multiple blades. The weapons and arts available to you depend on the blades with which you bond. And you never know what kind of blade you'll get until you awaken them. Sometimes you may muster up some very special ones. Oh, looks like you hit the jackpot this time. You can pick up to three blades into battle with you. With each blade being either an attacker type, defender type, or a healer type, it's important to switch blades and tactics in step with your situation. Like I always say, there's no better game plan than using the right blade for the job at hand. As a basic rule of thumb for drivers, you should always stay abreast of the blades your party members are using, and strategize accordingly. By using your arts, you'll fill up your blade's special gauge. When you finally activate one of these specials, the driver will return the weapon to its blade owner, enabling the blade to deliver a devastating attack. Blade specials have four levels of intensity, and I must say, levels three and four are a bit too wild for my taste. So, what do you think? You are still a bit green. But one day you may work your way up to being a great driver yourself. There is much more to learn, but consider this a sneak peek. You can combine arts into something more and really turn the tide. And now it's past my bedtime. Your journey through the clouds begins when Xenoblade Chronicles 2 launches on Nintendo Switch December the 1st. The world of all rest is waiting for you. Alongside the regular version, we will be offering a special edition, including a sound selection CD, a special metal game case, and a 220-page hardbound art book. You can also look forward to the release of a Xenoblade Chronicles 2-themed Nintendo Switch Pro Controller, sold separately.